good. Beautiful. Well, you're looking gorgeous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bertha, you are too. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm looking at, uh, is that Dr. Sheila? Or oh, that's uh, Marvie. That's Dr. Sheila. How are you doing, Dr. Sheila? Okay, let me go on to Marvie. And then I'm going to go and say hello to, uh, I guess that's all that's on right now. Hi, Katrina. Hello. <laughs> now, I know you can, put, you can put some more energy in that hello than that. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying, Moselle. That's I'm trying. Trying. <laughs> I, Katrina, I'm going to ask you to share your testimony today. <laughs> I should have shared it yesterday before I was in pain. <laughs> Well, you know, it's got to come one either earlier or later or earlier. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dr. Sheila. Oh, hi, Moselle. Good, 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 good. Girl, you just looking like a movie star. <laughs> well, I, I'll take that compliment. <laughs> California agrees with you. Well, this is my home. <laughs> I've been here all my life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hear you. I hear you. People so that, who are that from cold. California love it, don't they, Joby? Yes, yes. she comes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> California love California. My husband never stops talking about California. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it here. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess so. I mean, the weather is gorgeous. What, um, 80%, 90% of the time? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yep. That sounds great. Uh, <laughs> I see Miss Bertha on there, huh? <laughs> Hi, Hi Gemma. Hi, Bertha. <laughs> Hi, Joby. <laughs> you enjoyed the pictures, huh? I did. I really did. Very, you did. <laughs> you did really a good job on everybody. Yeah, you see that I'm not on any of them because I'm taking all the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> you have to share the pictures with us, Joby. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's you know, my, my niece passed away last week. Oh. And, the funeral, and, and Bert knows her and her parents. So yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Those. Yeah. Well, our condolences go go to the family. Thank you. That, that's why she was here earlier. Uh, they came she, early, yeah. For the funeral. Oh, okay. So we're supposed to leave it to the 16th. And she was in her 60s, early 60s? And next Wednesday. No, she was uh, uh, scheduled to come on the 16th of Thanksgiving, but then after my niece passed and the funeral was on the 5th, so she came on the 4th. Yeah. Oh, okay. How, how old was your niece? 67. Oh, okay. Wow. Two days after her birthday. Yeah, that seems so young. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, Gemma, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Wonderful. You, did you have a good day? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank did you, you play tennis today? Uh, not today, not today. But um, uh, I'm scheduled on Monday and Thursdays, so. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. I'll, I'll be <laughs> playing on Friday. I'm not playing tomorrow. Not playing tomorrow, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you say you're not okay. okay. <laughs> hey, Dr. Gina. Hi. Um. Uh. So, Dr. Gina, how are you? How was your day? Yes. We lost Dr. Gina. Here's here's where you go when you want to see everybody else. See some other people. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of them on yet. You need one of the speaker view. Okay. Now I see you. It's kind of speaker view now. Okay. And then I uh, gather view. Yeah, this way you see everybody. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's how I feel. Yes, she is. <laughs> I see Marvie's trying to connect to uh, audio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some have to connect to their phone and their computer because the audio and the computer is not working. Oh, okay. Okay. These computers are well, Katrina, you, you don't have to be seen to give a report. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll give it on, on the last the last meeting. <laughs> well, just give everybody uh, preparation for the report. You know, I'm, I'm going to ask you because I'm just excited. <laughs> hi, Amy. Hello. Hi, Moselle. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm just so happy to see you. Good. I missed everybody last week. I know. It, I'm telling you, it's amazing how, how what a family we have become. <laughs> yes, I know. indeed. I are we going to talk about Thanksgiving uh, foods today? Uh, yeah, we, we should and we can. Good. So we'll, okay. We'll, yeah. uh, we'll let you um, uh, spear that conversation. How's that? <laughs> I want to hear what people like to make. Oh, okay. Well, we can make sure we do that. Uh, we'll we'll have that in our our intro. Um, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Hi, Julie. Hello. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I am doing great. I am doing great. I'm just, uh, uh, as Hiawatha would say, I am uh, blessed and highly favored. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that Amen. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, um, Let's see. Did we catch everybody who is um, who's who's on early? Three o'clock right now. Okay, just hit six o'clock. So, we'll uh, hi Wafa. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I'll let the let the games begin. Yeah, let's start off with a word of prayer. Yes. Almighty Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gathering today. We thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us. We thank you for everything that you provided for us. We thank you for your provision. We thank for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to guide and direct our lives. And we continue to ask for your blessings for the people on the line and for the people that are coming. And also bless the people that are bereaving right now. And Almighty Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We just glorify your holy name. These are all blessings we ask in Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you for that beautiful prayer. I want to go right ahead. And we need to start our, our deep breathing. Remember, deep breathing is energizing because the oxygen provides more energy than the food we eat. And we think we need to eat food for energy, but we need to deep breathe for energy. So in order to start our deep breathing, let's take a deep breath. And this exhale. Breathe in through the nostril and breathe out through the mouth. Then what we'll do is we'll, we'll breathe uh, at least three or four times by doing um, what we call our square breathing. And we inhale, hold. Exhale, hold. Inhale, hold. Exhale, hold. Inhale, hold. Exhale, hold. One more time. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Now that's our breathing. So we should really try to become conscious of our need to deep breathe on a regular basis. And we should have a series of several sessions. In fact, when you first wake up in the morning, you should try that deep breathing if you need to be energized. 
Then let's do our laughter. Last night I did a laughter for the um, healthier Lansing area, healthier subgroup. And we really just had a lot of fun. In fact, they were telling me how much they enjoyed participating in the laughter. So we always uh, end the laughter with ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. And we always decide, see, I, I do the laughter with just the vowels because that's so easy. They have window exercises. They have exercises where you go around the room and pretend that you're opening up the wonder and you laugh as long as you want to. <laughs> so, so let's do our A E I O U. <clears throat> A. 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 Oxygen going all up uh, in my neck and my ear. <laughs> well, that felt good. Thank you so much, Hiawatha. Welcome. <clears throat> so, Hiawatha, do you remember the book uh, that was written by the guy on laughter? It seemed like his name was Norman something. A Norman cousin. Um, tell us, tell everybody about that book. That's a book that we should revisit. Well, actually, I'd like to tell people about the person who's perpetuating, who's continued to carry on the World Laughter Tour organization. And he's a psychologist, and his name is Steve Wilson. And I happened to talk with him this morning, and I was telling him that I had just recently made a presentation on laughter therapy. And I told him, I said, and I, it's amazing, I'm 90 years old, and I still remember it. I'm still getting compliments from it. He said, well, listen, I'm on the 88, so you're encouraging me. <laughs> <laughs> so his name is Steve Wilson. He's a psychologist. And he, he decided that he was working with these people who were making him depressed. He said he got so depressed working with these people. So he had heard of laughter yogurt. So he went to, to, to India to let, take yoga, laughter yoga from a doctor, a medical doctor called Kataria, K-A-T-A-R-I-A. And that's when he decided he would start an organization. And he said, how about the, do you know, since COVID has been a blessing because I have people all over the world now who know about the World Laughter Tour. And he <laughs> said, we do our Zoom training and we still carry the course. And anybody who wants to become a laughter therapist, therapist can become a laughter therapist because we mail them the book. They can uh, complete their assignments at their own speed. And we don't have any one month class or two month class. Whenever you want to complete your assignment, you can complete your assignment. <laughs> so it was interesting talking with him and he said, and everything is less than $500. And he said, you can get a certification where you can actually make money teaching people how to laugh mm. and, and developing groups in your neighborhood, laughter group, laughter therapy groups. Wow. He said, there are a lot of them in the uh, Cleveland, Ohio area. So, 
Somebody might want to consider that. <laughs> so he, he lives in the Ohio area? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still, I'm going to pull out my book on, um, by Norman Cousins on. When well, Norman he, Cousins had a serious illness. Yes. And what he did, the doctors had told him that he would not recover. And that um, he decided that what he would do, he would writ. At that time, they didn't have DVDs. What do you call those other things they used to have that they would show? Anyway, video, no, they didn't have. VHS. It's something that they Yeah, had. VHS. Yeah. <clears throat> so he would go to the library, check them out, and he would check out all laughter, everything about laughter. And he started laughing and he healed himself. Yes, it's a beautiful story. I can I can see the book now. It seems like it's a little blue book. It's on my shelf. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's 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 a beautiful story. Thank you, Hiawatha. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so uh, that's um, that's a nice uh, place for us to. Uh, I think we'll we'll go uh, and around and let anybody who wants to share right before, um, maybe somewhere in the middle, uh, based on Amy's request, people might want to share a special dish. Well, maybe it's the best time to do it now. You think um, everybody doesn't have to share, but what's a special um, plant-based dish you are preparing for Thanksgiving? Just to give some ideas. So, um, <clears throat> Hiawatha, we'll start with you, just quickly. Just take about 30 seconds to share. Well, I tell you, I don't plan to plan anything for Thanksgiving. <laughs> in fact, a girl, her name is Rose Ajax. In fact, she extended me my first Thanksgiving invitation, and she said, Hiawatha, I'm going to come by and pick you up and bring you to my house for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, how nice. So you don't even have to take a dish. No. Beautiful. Well, I, I talked to Razia today. Today's her birthday. For those of you who know Razia, she's one of the, uh, the thoroughbreds of uh, plant-based here in the Detroit area. Yes. And uh, her birthday was today. I called her, wish her happy birthday. And she, uh, I had sent out a notification to people in the Detroit area who wanted to get to have a meetup, a plant-based meetup on that Saturday after Thanksgiving. So she's willing to to help me do that. And we're thinking about the Hannah house. So for those of you who are local, put that on your calendar uh, for a plant-based uh, dish. Um, on, and if just about 10 of us could get together and have a, and bring a dish to pass or share, wouldn't that be great? So Joby and Sheila, share a highlight of what, what you guys are gonna be having for Thanksgiving. Just one dish. Um, I don't know, we, we actually haven't planned it yet. My, my granddaughter is doing it. And so she doesn't uh, eat meat too much anyway. So she's, she's gonna make some dishes and, and, and I'm gonna make either the pumpkin pie or the uh, pecan pie out of your either out of your book or uh, Hawatha's book. I looked at it this morning, so we're gonna do either one of those for oh, our dessert. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. Oh, that that's a beautiful um, sweet potato, vegan sweet potato or pumpkin yeah. pie. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. So that that's sounds wonderful. Doing. I love it. So Bertha, you next, and then Julie. Just one dish, plant based dish that you're planning for the holiday. So Julie, go ahead while Bertha's uh, is coming off mute. <clears throat> sure. So I do a quinoa vegetable salad. Mmm. I like that. You're putting artichoke in it. <laughs> I I like artichokes. A lot of my family don't like artichokes. Oh, I don't okay. like artichokes, but no. But it's usually like the little bit of broccoli, bell pepper, um, um, garbanzo bean. Um, and um, green onions, tomatoes, that sort of thing. 
Oh yeah, that quinoa dish is amazing. And it's, oh my goodness, it's, it's so delicious. Uh, I'm trying to think of where I usually go to get that. <clears throat> um, Amy. Yeah, I'm gonna make something that my dad used to make, but he would have put a whole bunch of sugar in it. So I'm gonna make it a little different. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's we grind up apples and cranberries and then add some walnuts and just oh. make a little salad out of that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'm so glad uh I discovered um <clears throat> that cranberry didn't have to come in a can about 20 years ago and uh <laughs> you just get the raw. Uh, Jama and I were in uh, Trader Joe's <coughs> and uh, Better Health, and we just got the raw the cranberries, and then you get the okay. um, the what pomegranates, <clears throat> and you put it all in the food processor with apples and uh, raisins, mm. and chop it all up with a little uh, ginger and a little lemon juice, and it is it makes an amazing cranberry chutney. And that recipe is is in <coughs> is in my book for the most part. Oh, lovely. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, and maybe a, just a little bit of cinnamon, but it's a beautiful way I to make cranberry it. chutney. Oh, I okay, love it. Hey, Bertha, what is your plant base? Just one, one dish. <clears throat> I can see you and I see you're off mute, but I just can't hear you. <laughs> okay, we're going to come back to Bertha. And uh, Linda, do you have a, a specialty for us? And then Gemma, and then Monica. Linda, you're still on mute. Uh, Linda Burks. Oh, now you're good, go ahead. Okay, well, I have this recipe here and I didn't even know how to uh, pronounce it, but it's a chickpea and it's really a salad and it had like different vegetables and stuff. And, um, and it's, it's called chickpea and I have to spell the word and it's with a dressing. It's N-I-C-O-I-S-E. And it's a vegetarian, a gluten-free and it's a family friendly, but you know, we're gonna have, I always like salads, but I wanted to do something a little bit different, so. As a matter of fact, we had uh, a big salad uh, last night, but this is uh, with, um, it's actually a cook. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Just, just read what the title says. Okay, it says chickpea, and then I spelled that second name. Right. And, uh, and it's with a T and the dressing is a T-A-H-I-N-I -I dressing. Oh, oh, tahini. Tahini. Yeah, oh, that's you. um sesame seed. You make it out of sesame seeds. So I said, I'm going to give it a try because he likes salads now that we've been doing it for quite a while. Yeah. And we, oh. have our salad, we have our salad days. And uh, so my father used to always say rabbit food. But, uh, <laughs> but we do like salad. So I'm going to yes. try this one. And I want to try it. Um, and it looks wonderful. So I tore it out. Uh, of the book and uh, I told him um, we're going to try this and he said that looks pretty good so uh -huh. I know I'm going to try that one wonderful that sounds good that sounds good uh, Gemma okay um, I'm going to follow along I'm going to be boring and tell you that I'm going to do the uh, cranberry chutney that we were talking about but I don't remember what we use for uh, what if you tell me to make my own crackers I'm going to pull my hair out there's not much left Okay, so but do you have any um, ideas for crackers? Oh, you mean like um, a dehydrated cracker? Okay, whatever with, with the chutney or do you? Oh, just... so go with the chutney. Yeah, um, and I, and after we're done, um, <clears throat> or, or I could text you a nice recipe for um, for uh, uh, crackers. It's hard to do raw crackers without the. Um, if you don't have a dehydrator, but it's not impossible. Okay. Um, I know how well, so you do it all the time. You have a quick response to that? No, it takes a little time to get all this stuff together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. And actually, I believe um, it was either Trader Joe's or Better Health. They have the uh, 
the um uh the raw crackers made out of um flaxseed no, okay. don't, don't you have a raw cracker recipe in your book Mazel? uh i think so and and Gemma, let's look through that and make sure we can get that okay and i i know i i know i have one okay so one way or the other, we'll, we'll get one together, Gemma, but between now and tomorrow. Okay, I have on page 41, there's three kinds, so. Oh, okay, I'll well, just see. try that. And I, I think her issue, Hiawatha, might be how to get it dry without a dehydrator. Thank you. Well, you know, some people just put it in the oven. On low? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you uh very and good then, thank you thank you that sounds good but raw crackers you can get from almost uh yeah the stores i know trader joe's has it and some yeah. of the health food stores are the flaxseed crackers that are raw and dry very good um uh monica or marvy or anybody who wants to come off a mute to share a recipe bertha's uh, ready oh bertha go ahead bertha <clears throat> <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not making anything. Um, I'm, I was invited to my friend's house, so I'm not taking anything. I'm not doing anything special. So I'm okay. out. Okay. Well, you guys see, you have your your Thanksgiving uh, Zoom background, so you you ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> so, um, anybody has any suggestions for people who? Are going places but not making anything uh they can carry you can always carry flowers you can always carry fruits um <clears throat> and uh you can always carry uh, uh of course just show up uh with your love and that i'm sure people would be happy about that uh dr I Gina, did you have something to share or cal otherwise we'll move on to the next item on the agenda I think I Monica is off. Is off uh, who's I'm talking? Like to share something if that's okay. I'm I'm in the car driving, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Monica? Go ahead. So I'm having a lentil loaf. It is the vegan way of making a meat loaf. Okay, I think we just lo lost you, Dr. Gina, but but I know you said lentil loaf. I think that was Monica. She's driving, so she probably lost. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. So Monica. Okay. Thank you, Can you Monica. Hear me now? Uh, we, yeah, we just yeah, that's, we just lost welcome. Monica. Okay, Dr. Gina, were you speaking? Okay, perhaps not. Okay, so um, unless anybody else want to share what. Uh, another cool uh, recipe for the holiday. We'll we'll continue on. Okay. Uh, this is Burks. I like to ask the question. So I did sign. I did sign up to request uh, to attend the meetup. So it, so the meetup is where we would bring a dish. To yes. Share? yes. Okay. Because I just needed to know. Okay. Okay, and that's um. And and who's speaking, Bert? Uh -huh, yeah, Linda. But, oh, Linda. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, Linda. Um, we got you covered and we'll talk. We'll send out a, we have about three or four confirmations. Okay. And you know where the Hannah house is, right? Uh, no, I don't. But okay. So I'm Woodward in Detroit. Okay. So, but once you send the address, I'll be, yeah, yeah, I would yeah. like it's, to. Um, yeah. Um, it's called the Hannah house. Just put it in your phone and uh, we'll, okay. we'll talk though. H A N N. Okay, okay, very good, very good. Uh, all right, so I think we um, we covered everybody who wanted to share something special that they're going to have um, for the uh, for the holiday. So let's let's begin our uh, our agenda, starting with uh, the first item: uh, blessings in a, a bucket, and uh, uh, but before we go, I do want to get a um Katrina's uh, testimony in so Katrina you have the floor 
All right, I'll be brief so we can get back on the schedule. Um, since we started the session, um, Moselle tied my arm behind my back and made me do the lemon cleanse. Um, it was hard in the beginning, but it eventually became a, a daily thing. And she just wanted to let you know, all know that I lost 17 pounds. Um, Whoa. Wow. <laughs> I got a lot more to go, but I did lose 17 pounds. Probably was all water weight, but I still lost it. Hey, 17 pounds, Wonderful. 17 pounds. I don't care what kind of weight we're talking about. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, Congratulations, Wonderful. Katrina. That is amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Wonderful. Uh, all kinds of stuff coming through the chat. So that this is amazing. Uh, just totally, totally amazing. Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm, mm, mm. I am I am just so thrilled about the whole thing. <clears throat> okay, so we're back to the agenda. And uh, today we're looking at uh, our blessings in the bucket. We're going to do uh, two sessions on um, reflexology. And um, we have a three minute video to show. I'll, I'll start off and then we'll show the video. Then I'll come back on. And then, um, uh, and then we will, uh, next week we'll do kind of part two of this whole thing. So <clears throat> the video that we're going to show is called Reflexology, looking at the top uh, and the size of the feet. And we know that the, <clears throat> the feet, as we've been focusing on for this entire series is very, important because they have more nerve endings in the body than any other part of the body. So that's why you're so ticklish. You see how kids can laugh and chuckle and you, boy, you want to get kids laughing. Just tickle them on their feet, right? And how, look how great we feel when we walk on, on the earth or on hardwood floors or, or in the sand. That's why we always want to go to the beach so we can walk on the sand because we're just tickling all those wonderful nerve endings in the feet. And uh, so your, your feet are just a beautiful part of your body. And uh, with all those nerve endings more than any other part in the body. So let's look at this video on reflexology, and then we'll get back to the article. Okay. I'm Crystal from Strength and You, your fitness and therapy experts. Today will be our last video in my reflexology series. We'll be covering the reflexes found on the tops of the foot, the inside of the foot, and the outside of the foot. In between the toes, we have the reflexes for the teeth and breast. You can retreat these reflexes if you have a toothache. If this is Vegamore's biggest sale of the year. Vegamore's Grow Here Serum is my favorite clean beauty product. If you have TMJ, but also if you have breast ache or tender breasts. This top part of the forefoot corresponds to the upper back. As you recall, on the bottom of the foot, this part corresponds to the chest and lungs. So this is good for upper back pain or tension or if you have like poor posture. The reflex in here and in here are the reflex points for your lymphatic drainage system. These are important to use if you have difficulty with your metabolism, if you feel bloated or swelling, or if you have lymphedema. This reflex around the ankle bone corresponds to the groin, fallopian, or inguinal lymphatic areas. The area behind the malleoli corresponds to the sciatic nerve, and as well as the Achilles tendon all the way down into the heel. This whole complex corresponds to your lower back. This is good for people with chronic low back pain, sciatica, or any kind of postural issues or movement dysfunctions. These points correspond to the uterus and ovaries, or the prostate and testicles. Now we'll do the outside of the foot. This part below the fifth toe corresponds to the shoulder complex. Um, it also does it on the bottom. So if you have rotator cuff issues, if you have impingement issues, or any kind of previous shoulder injuries, dislocations, this is a good place to work to increase circulation to that area. Obviously below the shoulder we have the arm, and then this triangle here is your hip, knee, and foot reflex. Um, so now on the inside of the foot. The curves on the inside of the foot correspond to the curves of the spine. So here we have your cervical spine or your neck, thoracic spine which is your upper back and mid-back, your lumbar spine 
which is your lower back, sacrum and coccyx, which are your tailbone. It's great to work the spine because the nerves all come out of the spine, so that affects everything. As well, it can decrease any kind of compression issues you have and any kind of back pain. Flexology is based on zone theory, which means when we stimulate different parts of the foot, it sends energy and healing to the different parts in the body. However, because it's non-invasive and indirect, if I touch the reflex point on your shoulder, you won't directly feel it in the shoulder. Reflexology requires more than one treatment to feel an overall difference in your daily life. If you have any questions about what should you wear or how it should feel or going forward with your reflexology treatment, please shoot us a message and we'll answer them in our next Q&A video. I'm Crystal from Strengthen You, and remember, you're only one strategy away from crushing your fitness goals. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Crystal. And uh, we'll hear from her again um, in, in uh, next week. So just, uh, we have an article because she's talking fast. And, and of course, some of us, I mean, I know Dr. Sheila being a chiropractor um, probably knows a lot about uh, reflexology, but some of us may not know as much about it. However, um, uh, reflexology is a therapeutic practice that's been around for centuries. And foot reflexology is especially popular, popular and it involves applying pressure to different points on your feet. Um, there's a reflexology chart, and uh, and we're going to go to that chart. We're not going to go through this entire article, but we we'll go through the parts that. Um, <clears throat> then you you will have a copy of it, so you can go back to it and read the whole article. Um, so. Um, uh, when we talk more about this, we're going to talk about how things line up with uh, what we call uh, energy channels. And we've talked about, we know that everything that's living has energy and the body has energy channels and, it, and what which we call, we can call frequency. And this frequency, um, we talked about when we were, when Cricket was talking about uh, the oils and all the oils have frequency. That's why you can take a certain oil that lines up with your that might help you to like carrot oil, help you to see better, or uh, an oil that will 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 um, direct itself to your to a pain area or to your or to your feet. So frequency uh, or these energy channels uh, will help us in terms of um, and and reflexology is connected to that. So there have been research done, and this paper that we are giving you that shows how it reduces anxiety, it helps migraines, it, it eases back pain, and it improves digestion. So these are just some of the things that, uh, uh, that, that have been researched about reflexology. So um, uh, this uh, uh, foot chart lines up, and I just wanna say a little bit about that before I finish up. And essentially, the, the, top, the, the top of each toe is connected to the uh, head and the brain. And the balls of, the, of your feet are connected to your heart, chest, and lungs. And the arch of your foot um, is connected to the liver, pancreas, and kidney, and the heels are um, connected to the lower back and the gut sy system. And also the left foot typically is connected um, to the left side of the body and the right foot is connected to the, uh, the right side of the body. So there's a lot of science in reflexology and certainly more than we can share with you in five minutes. But this article will give you a few more ideas. And if you're interested in learning more about it, um, uh, you could probably study it for several days or weeks and, uh, or months or a year and uh, to get to understand it better. But it's a very fascinating uh, study that's used a lot um, with, uh, in Chinese culture and uh, to some extent in the United States. So I know that you may have questions, but put them in the chat and, uh, and read the article and... Uh, 
uh, we will uh, end with uh, the takeaway, talk to your doctor before trying reflexology. And, um, uh, and I'm sure that it's another, it's an alternative medicine, non-invasive, and it might uh, be very uh, uh, powerful for, for some or for many. Okay, so if you have any questions, put them in the chat and we'll try and deal with them later. So now we are ready to go with the next part of our agenda, which is um, <clears throat> uh, talking about uh, the uh, Heal Thyself guidebook. And Dr. Yvonne is, has been kind enough to lead us through it. So we are on the, uh, the section uh, today uh, looking at uh, detox. So Dr. Yvonne? Hello, I'm Dr. Yvonne Jefferson Barnes. And with this session, we are continuing our review of the Eat to Heal Challenge Guide, page 11. We are reviewing detoxification. As I've always stated, it's my pleasure to review this information with you and for you. But the most effective way is for you to go back and review it for yourself. Detoxification, page 11. Detoxification usually refers to the removal of toxin buildup in the body. While it is a natural process carried out by the liver, there are numerous supportive detox mechanisms that promote the elimination of toxins. The process of detoxification will not only help your body achieve a pure state, it may also help improve numerous body functions. What are the benefits of detox, you ask? Of detoxing, you ask. Reduces internal and external inflammation, increases energy, eliminates feeling listless or sluggishness, minimizes digestive dysfunction, removes difficult to shed or accumulated belly fat. Now, many of us could really use help with that. Clears up acne and dry, irritated skin. How many times do we try to find ways to assist with that? Here's an easy way to do it. How does detoxing benefit the liver? It helps to calm and regulate emotions, favors energy and mental clarity, improves skin conditions and acne, regulates the flow of bile acids, promotes weight loss. What are the vital functions of the liver? Food is broken down in the digestive system, allowing nutrients to enter the blood and travel to the liver via the hepatic portal system. And we're talking about the liver. The liver processes some of the nutrients and stores some as energy for later while removing toxins. The rest of the nutrients are used to make other important chemicals the body needs. The liver synthesizes important nutrients and has several other functions, including production of bile, which helps carry away waste and break down essential fats in the small intestine to maximize digestion and absorption of critical nutrients and fat-soluble vitamins. Production of certain proteins for blood plasma. Production of cholesterol and special proteins to synthesize hormones and vital chemical signaling. 
Store and release glucose as needed. Process and store hemoglobin. Conversion of harmful ammonia to urea. And urea is one of the end products of protein metabolism that is excreted in the urine. Clearing the blood of drugs and other harmful substances. Regulating blood clotting proteins. Resisting infections by producing immune factors and removing bacteria from the bloodstream. Clearance of bilirubin. If there is a buildup of bilirubin, the skin and eyes turn yellow. So you can see how important and helpful detoxification is to your body's system. It doesn't take an awful lot to make sure that we are taking care of our bodies if we are eating the right kinds of foods and we are preparing them in very nutritious and helpful ways. And as we've always said, the natural foods are the better ones to build our body's strength. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you have found this review helpful. And we will see you again at the next session. Take good care. Thank you, Dr. Yvonne. That was excellent. That was excellent. Um, just see how, just to see how important the uh, all the body organs are, but especially the uh, the mighty liver. So take good care of your body. Take good care of your liver and detox, detox, detox. Whatever way you find uh, most convenient, but whatever you do, give the body a rest. Uh, and detox. Thank you so very much for that beautiful review. And now we are ready for our fitness segment. And Miss Latasha is in the gym this time. So let's see how, let's see what happens uh, when we go to the gym or to bring the gym to your home. <laughs> for this session. Today we're going to be working our lower body. And whenever you work a particular muscle group, you want to make sure you always warm it up. So today, to warm up our lower body, I'm going to be using a fitness band. It can be done with or without. I am going to demonstrate with the band and without the band. We're going to start off seated. To do this movement, we're going to start with our knees closed, and then we're going to open, and that is the entire movement. So without the band, your knees start close together. You open them and close. My feet are together, open and close. And this can be done two times with 30 reps, okay? Now I'm gonna show it with the band. So if you purchase one, you'll know exactly what to do. I'm just gonna stick my feet in and then place it right above my knee. And again, I'm gonna do the same movement, knees starting close together, and then we're gonna open and close, open and close. And I'm keeping tension in the band, which means I'm not closing my knees all the way so that I keep a little resistance. Good. And again, you want to do a warm up at least about five minutes, and that's going to really get that blood flowing to the area that you're going to work. Okay? Now, you can keep the band on if you have one. If you do not have one, we are going to show it again, like I said, with and without the band. Now, we're going to place the band up a little bit higher on our thighs. We're going to stand. But kind of keep our knees slightly bent. We're going to move from side to side. This is going to work your inner thighs as well as the outside 
of your glutes. From side to side. I'm also keeping tension in the band, again, which means I'm not allowing my knees to come all the way together. Good. Perfect. The next thing that we're gonna do They are called glute kickbacks. And it is, it is exactly as it says, glute kickbacks. So I am going to be using my weights. This one is about five pounds. I'm gonna place them, actually this one is two and a half to three pounds. I'm gonna place them on my ankles. This does not have to be done with weights. If you do have them, that is just going to give you a little bit more strength training, but again, it works perfect. So you want to find a chair that is sturdy. And I am starting off with one leg. I'm going to do about 15 reps on this one side, and I'm going to switch to the other side. Again, your foot leaves the floor, kicks back, and comes back to the starting position. Again, out and comes down. Out and down. Good. Again, on the other side. You want to make sure you find something that is sturdy to help you with your balance. And I'm gonna do 15 on each side, and then pause, and I'm gonna give myself maybe 30 seconds to catch my breath, and I'll repeat that same movement again on the other side. All right, so we're gonna do that four oh. times, about 15 on each leg. And that's it. Now I am gonna show it without the weight. Again, gonna find something sturdy. Leg comes out and down. Out and down. Good. You should not feel this in your lower back. If you do, that means you need to drop your leg. You do not want to have an arch in your back. Very good. And then the other leg, up and down. Great. And this movement is perfect for men and women. So I hope you've enjoyed the few exercises that I have showed today, and I can't wait to see you all again. That is just beautiful, Latasha. Bert, I know you're smiling. I know you're proud. <laughs> this is so, so, so sweet. I'm gonna go out uh, and get me uh, one of those, uh, the ankle weight, the knee band, and the glutes. I mean, that is an amazing way to work on the legs, uh, the glute, and the ankles. So uh, thank you so much, Latasha. That was just beautifully done. Thank you so very much. So now we're ready for our next part of our agenda. And uh, Dr. Nakisha, welcome. And we're so glad to see you and uh, God bless you. So let's begin uh, listening to uh, Dr. Nakisha. Hello, my name is Nakisha Ware and I'm delighted to share a video review of Alzheimer's disease nursing symptoms, treatment, stages, and pathophysiology. I encourage you, each one of you, to, to watch this video. Uh, the purpose, as you will see, is to just help you become more familiar with this disease. Now, one thing you should know, this is a 40-minute lecture, video lecture, by a nurse for nurses. 
the YouTube channel is actually titled registerednurse.com. So Sarah, who's lecturing on the video, shares medical terms you may not be familiar with. However, she is so very good at making these terms simple for the layperson. You won't get confused and you'll be able to follow along from beginning to end. Now, having said this, this is a great video for three reasons. One, it will familiarize you with this type of disease or disorder. And if you're a caregiver, it's got great care strategies. And three, if you're concerned that you or a family member may be experiencing early signs of Alzheimer's, it will help you identify them. So our nurse, Sarah, defines Alzheimer as a type of dementia that was new for me, that leads to the gradual loss of cognitive, motor, and communication abilities, whereas patients can problem solve, recall memories, perform everyday tasks, or take care of oneself. Sarah breaks down the disease in stages, the ways you can test for Alzheimer's, as well as nursing interventions. Now, most interesting to me was the following statistics. So get a pen and paper for this. The fifth leading cause of death among adults 65 and older is Alzheimer. And 6.2 million Americans will had it in 2021, and they believe that 14 million more will have it by 2060. Women are more likely to develop this disease than men, and that's because they tend to live longer. And Hispanics and African Americans are at a higher risk of getting this disorder as well. Signs and symptoms tend to appear after the age of 60, but it could actually happen earlier. They have found cases of that. And the risk factors do include family history, age, gender, diabetes, heart disease, and smoking. This disease becomes progressively worse and can be organized, as Nurse Sarah uh, shared, into stages. And some patients actually progress slower through the stages where many others may go faster through them. The exact cause, which I'm sure you have heard of Alzheimer's disease, is not fully understood. Therefore, um, as you can see from the facts I just listed from the CDC, that it is a chronic disease that gradually becomes so, um, so become worse actually until the patient is unable to function. It's very debilitating for the patient and it does create, if you have had this experience, it does create a major impact for the family members who tend to be the caregivers and of course, naturally healthcare workers. So if a family can't provide for the patient or can't provide the care, uh, generally, patients will have to go to a skills nursing facility. Now, this is a great video, as I mentioned before, and I encourage you to take the time to watch it. What I enjoyed learning about it was just the care strategies. They're actually good for anyone that you might be taking care of, whether or not they have dementia, this type of dementia or not. Everything from how to have a healthy relationship with a patient or family member on how to properly engage with them, uh, how to provide uh, interventions for eating food and even what plant-based whole foods to prepare. This video was extremely relevant to us in Heat to, Eat to Heal, Heal Thyself. So there may be a point in your life when you may be called to help a family member with Alzheimer. And this video will be an excellent resource for you to do just that. Thank you again for tuning in. Watch this video and I look forward to providing more uh, reviews for other sessions. Thank you. Beautiful, beautifully done, beautifully done, uh, Dr. Nakisha. And um, uh, what is the number on this video? Um, Katrina, do you have that at your fingertip? On your video list, uh, we can get that to you. Uh, so you can make sure you go to the website. Number 53. Number 53. Uh, yes. Number 53, and uh, uh, Alzheimer's is, is becoming a rampart in our country, in our community. Um, it's almost like um, it's in the drinking water. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing that we must address. So 
we hope that, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Nukesha for doing an excellent job with that. And now we have Julie, who's going, who's doing our uh, next chapters in our book review. Thank you, Julie, God bless you. Thank you, God bless you, Mazel, and everyone. Okay, so of course the telomere effect is what we're reading and I'm going over the last three chapters of the book, which is um, chapters 11 through 13. And just a reminder that uh, telomeres are the end caps of their chromosomes, which is where our DNA is. And so when the cell replicates, the telomeres will shorten not the DNA. So that's what helps us stay healthy and telomeres have to do with um, aging or disease. So we want to make sure that they're at a length that's appropriate. And so this book's all about that. Um, so we last time we talked about exercise and diet and sleep and that sort of thing. These three chapters are about um, the first one is chapter 11 is about ex more external factors around us. So um, chapter 11 is called the places and faces that support our telomeres. And that's really about our, our uh, stress levels, our comfort levels uh, and so forth uh, with the social co co cohesion, meaning how you feel in your neighborhood. Um, do you feel supported? Do you have, um, do you feel you know, how do you feel and how that affects your well being and your body? So, they um, looked at different studies that compared city dwellers to rural people who lived in more rural areas. And so, they found uh, just a couple of interesting things um, was that they, that money didn't have as big of so much of an impact, it was more education. So, so it, it, there's a lot to that, but. Um, more they talked about in your environment, uh, chemicals. So pesticides, um, heavy metals. Uh, so we want to look at, of course, where we're getting those kind of things. Um, so of course that could be in plastics, water, and um, your, what you might be breathing in. So, and that's going to depend on the person, of course, of where they work and their, uh, the, their exposures, right? Your environmental exposure. So just thinking about what you can, what a person can do. They talked about at the end of the chapter, helping them, um, you know, if you needed a water filter, for example, or, um, um, you know, not to use plastic, especially don't put plastic into a microwave when you're heating up food. So to reduce your exposure that way. And at the end of the Renewal Lab, they had different links and websites that you could um, look at to help us clean up our, cosmetics, our lotions, our cleaning agents and so forth, so that they don't have these kind of chemicals that would shorten telomeres or have a related to that. Um, chapter 12 is all about pregnancy. Cellular aging begins in the womb is the name of that chapter. And so uh, that first part, it throws around the hypothesis is if a parent's stress affects their telomere length, and can we pass that on now to the child? We know that um, that can happen in genetic conditions that, with the, who have shortened telomeres because of their genes, but can everybody do that? So that's still something they're throwing around in research and trying to figure out. But basically, um, this one's about nutrition, of course, you know, getting enough um, protein uh, and um, folate and different B vitamins that might um, affect the, the telomere length. So just keeping the baby healthy, of course, like we know that mothers always are asked and giving advice of how to do that. Uh, and this is specifically about the telomere length though. Um, and so basically it's like eat the rainbow, have good antioxidants, um, avoid a chemical exposure, avoid scented candles, those kinds of things. Um, and then the stress, the stress that a mom might have might affect that. But of course, um, you know, we always need to do, you know, do our best and can't be stressed about being stressed, right? So, and that leads me to um, chapter 13, 
It's just about children in general. Like when do these telomeres start shortening? And so they had some great resources. So you'll definitely want to check out the book because it, it's just talked about all sorts of things like sensitive children, how to handle them. Like 20% of the children may be extra sensitive and how um, that uh, just can be something that needs to be looked at and, and treated in different, you know, a different way than another child who's not as sensitive um, as far as, um, you know, child rearing. So, um, and again, you know, their stress, you know, everybody needs a little bit of healthy stress, right, to live and thrive. But just, you know, it was kind of depressing, the last chapter, because they had some extreme examples of, you know, uh, poor conditions for children. And so that was a little heartbreaking about orphanages and that sort of thing. But they did research and they were able to see how stress affects telomere length. So, and then even in every day growing up. So I would definitely look at, you know, at the end, there's a lot of links, a lot of, uh, of things that you can look at and, and even asking the question, should I have my telomeres tested? What length are they? So if you go back to chapter six, I believe, you can take a t the test, the quiz, and just find out that way. Even the author at that time of the, when the book was written, she had not had her telomeres uh, tested because you know, she thought it would just be better to not have that stress weight on her, but to actually just do the recommendations of keeping us healthy would be more ideal. And, but that's up to the individual. I thought overall the book was really good. Excellent, Julie. Thank you so very much. Oh my God. I hate to know that it's ending. <laughs> You've done an excellent job in uh, finishing up the, bu the book and thank you so very much. God bless you. <clears throat> so now we are ready for uh, the main event. Is that right, Katrina? Yes, we're ready for the presenter. Okay. Uh, and I know that Lisa has to leave five minutes early. So let's get right into it. Uh, Lisa is our girl. She is amazing, dynamic, and uh, knowledgeable, and uh, we love her, and uh, she has, um, she, she is just a mighty force in our community, and we would like now to introduce her as she talks about the topic of Alzheimer's. So Lisa, welcome back. Love you. And thank you so very much. And we, we, we welcome the fact that you are willing to share with us your knowledge and your expertise. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Moselle. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to be here. Always happy to present for Heal Thyself. Um, me and Moselle have been friends for many years now, so it's always good to come back and support this plant-based movement. So I'm excited to briefly share with you all this evening how to combat Alzheimer's and cognitive decline by taking a whole food plant-based approach. So I'm gonna start off by sharing my screen and just talking briefly about what Alzheimer's is um, and how we can combat it. And then I'll also leave a few minutes at the end for anyone who might have some questions about how to take this whole food plant-based approach to this lifestyle condition. And I say that very intentionally because it is typically believed in our culture that Alzheimer's is not preventable, that there's nothing we can do to decrease our chances of succumbing to this dementia, this form of dementia, but that is very much untrue. So while genetics definitely plays a role, our lifestyle plays an even bigger role in our ability to protect ourselves from cognitive decline. And so let's get into it and talk a little bit about this form of dementia. So what is Alzheimer's disease exactly? It's one of the most common forms of dementia. And it's estimated that about 10% of people over the age of 65 will develop some form of dementia. Um, and people over the age of 85 have about a 50% chance. And so Alzheimer's, if once you're diagnosed, is characterized by these amyloid plaques and tau tangles in the brain. And all that means quite simply is that there's these abnormal protein fragments that have collected in the brain in an excessive amount. And the brain does not have the ability yet. We have not discovered it to rid our brain of these excess 
protein fragments. And so these are the characteristic traits of Alzheimer's. And that's essentially how a diagnosis happens. But what most people don't understand about this condition is that although most individuals over the age of 65 and 85 are, is when diagnosis happens, that is not the day of conception. Diagnosis is not the day of conception. That's really important to remember because by the time a diagnosis happens, we have been building up to this diagnosis for years with our lifestyle. So lifestyle and cognitive impairment, what is the connection? Just like our physical health, most of us know the impact of lifestyle disease from the neck down, right? And sometimes we tend to believe that everything from the neck up is ran by genetics or fate or just a stroke of bad luck, but it's that's a hundred percent untrue. So just like our physical health, cognitive decline um, is also impacted by our lifestyle. So although you may be genetically predisposed for Alzheimer's, it does not have to be your fate. It does not have to be our fate. And that's the very first thing. And if you don't take anything else from this presentation tonight, that's what I want you to remember is that Alzheimer's is something that you have control. Dementia is something that you have control control over increasing and or decreasing your chances by the things you are doing today. By the time a diagnosis happens, by the time a diagnosis happens, we have been building up to this condition over years and years by mostly what we do in our day to day. Okay. So your lifestyle plays a major role in whether or not these genes will express themselves. So even if a parent has it, if both parent has it, which does increase your chances, it still does not guarantee that those would be your own health outcomes. All right. So genetics are just bookmarks of our DNA, but what determines whether or not those genes are going to express themselves? Things like how we feed them, what we drink, what we do, our stress levels, a quality of our relationships, our exercise, all of that determines whether or not these genes will express themselves, all right? So this is very much a lifestyle condition. So characteristically, what we look for when it comes to something like Alzheimer's is what's called the APOE4 gene, all right? And so this is responsible for, it's a protein that regulates fat, and those who carry this gene typically have an increased chance of developing Alzheimer's, but again, not a guaranteed chance. So when you're getting testing done or for something you're worried about, especially if you had a parent or someone in your family who battled this condition, that is the gene that you would get tested for, the APOE4 gene. And Alzheimer's falls within the top 10 causes of death in the U.S., which is interesting because the top 10 causes of death, which was just kind of um, redefined in 2020 um, by the CDC. So now COVID is actually in the top 10 causes of death in the U.S. But out of the top 10 causes of death, with Alzheimer's being on that list, um, about seven out of 10 of those are lifestyle diseases. So this includes heart disease being number one. Then this includes things like kidney failure. Um, it includes Alzheimer's disease. It includes type two diabetes. And so what, it's fascinating to me how many of us are perishing and dying prematurely from things that we have control over. And so we can do something about this. And as we know, many of these conditions are even more prevalent in marginalized communities and communities of color. And so we have way more control than we think. Let me show you how. Okay. So there's four conditions that increases the chance of Alzheimer's disease. And I'm gonna go through all four right now really quickly. The first is inflammation. The first is inflammation. So inflammation is not a bad thing, okay? Inflammation is a, actually a protective function that our body does that gives us an indication that something needs attention. But what happens when we ignore those signalings what happens is that inflammation becomes chronic, means, meaning we are inflamed over a period of time, typically three months or longer. And that is when inflammation becomes detrimental to health and becomes disease promoting. But we can be doing something as simple as, you know, chopping up fruits and vegetables and we might nick our finger. That swelling, that bleeding, it's just simply inflammation, right? We could be walking around the bedroom and accidentally hit our leg on the side of the bed, right? And that pain we're gonna feel or whatever happens, that's inflammation. It's totally normal. It's, it's, it's a good thing. We actually need it. So we'll know where to place our attention. However, 
when we go months and weeks and years ignoring the symptoms that our body and the signals that our body is giving us, that's when inflammation becomes problematic. And this is one of the foremost indicators of cognitive decline is chronic inflammation. So persistent unhealthy diet, chronic stress, a sedentary lifestyle, all of these can be markers for inflammation. But when it comes to the brain, chronic inflammation appears in the forms of different types of proteins, similar to that amyloid plaque and those tile tangles that I mentioned earlier. And the overactive cells that are meant to clear waste, we have a waste clearing system in our brain, just like we do our bodies, but become overactive because they can't clear it out as fast as it's coming in. And so while our brain tries to keep up with all of the toxicity and the damage that it's exposed to on a regular basis, if we add to that with an unhealthy lifestyle, unfortunately, that waste clearing system in our brain cannot work as efficiently. And so that's how inflammation leads or lays the foundation for cognitive decline. Let's look at the second one, oxidation. So oxidation is quite simple. Um, oxidative stress happens as a result of an imbalance in the body, guys, between um, free radicals and antioxidants. So what oxidation means is oxidation occurs when oxygen reacts with other substances. The simplest, simplest way to think about this that I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with is if you cut a piece of fruit, like um, let's say a banana or a avocado or an apple, and you sit it out on the counter, you don't eat it right away, though they will turn brown fairly quickly, right? Within the hour, you will start seeing some browning. That is oxidation. But this happens in our bodies as well. So what's happening is the fruit has been cut open. It's being exposed to oxygen and it's starting that oxidation process, which means it starts turning brown, kind of like rusting on a car, okay? But the same thing happens inside of our bodies when we have more free radicals than we have antioxidants. So free radicals, are molecules that are missing an electron. And so how do we get free radicals in our body? Well, it comes from the foods we don't do or don't eat. So unhealthy foods, an unhealthy diet. It comes from the environment, different things and toxins we're exposed to in our environment. It comes from maybe other pre-existing conditions, right? So if you have other health challenges, it can increase the production of free radicals. And so what happens is if we don't have enough antioxidants in the diet, to combat the free radicals that we're producing, it causes what's called oxidative stress. And this oxidation also increases our chances of cognitive decline. So how does this work in the brain? So in the brain, free radicals are trying to steal an electron from other healthy molecules, which results in permanent damage. And again, this escalates over time. So even though you may not be diagnosed with Alzheimer's until your 60s or 70s, all of this oxidation, all of this inflammation was happening years prior, right? Years prior, if we are not intentional about changing our lifestyle. So let's look at number three, two more to go through here. Glucose dysregulation. Now, listen, that's just a fancy way of saying leading up to insulin resistance. Everyone has probably heard of um, insulin resistance in relation to type two diabetes, but all it is, is abnormal production and use of glucose in the body. So blood sugar, right? So we have blood sugar dysregulation. So here's the thing. How many of you guys knew that if you have insulin resistance or type two diabetes, it significantly increases your chances for Alzheimer's like significantly, Right. So because when we have this blood sugar imbalance, our brain is not getting the fuel it needs to thrive. So without insulin, glucose rises out of the cell, but it doesn't have what it needs to get into the muscle and liver cells. Now, don't worry about all this science here. All I want you to know is this insulin resistance means that our brain are, is not able to get the sustenance that it needs and it's essentially being starved, okay? So because glucose is our body's number one fuel source. Glucose is what our body and our brains require for energy, 
However, if we have high amounts of sugar in our blood, but it doesn't have what it needs to get out of our blood into our cells, not only does it affect everything below the neck, below the head, but everything above as well. So although we have something called a blood brain barrier, it can only do so much to protect us. So once you've escalated from insulin resistance to diabetes, your risk of cognitive decline and eventually Alzheimer's is great, like extremely great. I did a, um, what's today? I can't even keep up. Today's Tuesday. So on Saturday, I did a presentation on um, diabetes because November is di type two diabetes awareness month. And so I did like this mini masterclass on Saturday for another organization all about diabetes. And I was explaining to them that when you have type two diabetes, there is two conditions, two specific diseases that you significantly increase your risk of. So if you have type two diabetes, you significantly increase your risk for Alzheimer's and you significantly increase your risk for kidney failure. But what's, but what's kind of odd about this is that when you have type two diabetes, it takes years sometimes for the kidneys to begin to fail and for Alzheimer's to present. And so sometimes people don't even know that they're connected, but going years with this imbalance in our blood sugar is detrimental and everything is connected. One disease is going to potentially lay the foundation for another. So if anyone here has blood sugar issues, I cannot stress this enough. You must do what's required to get these things under control. And the fourth and final condition, which increases our risk for Alzheimer's is lipid dysregulation. So similar to glucose dysregulation, right? Blood sugar imbalance and insulin resistance, lipid dysregulation is fat. So lipids are fats, all right? And so what that means is we are building up too much fat in the body. And lipids are fat structures. They're, they're integral to our body. They're integral to hormonal production, storage, energy storage, cellular structure. However, when lipid dysregulation happens, the body is subjected to excess lipids, which increases the chances of inflammation and oxidative stress and essentially increases the chances for Alzheimer's. Because cholesterol, for example, is a type of lipid. So what am I saying here? When we have things like high cholesterol, again, a lifestyle condition, because we get cholesterol from the food we eat, our liver makes it, and then we get excess amounts from what we eat, primarily animal products. So if we have a condition like high cholesterol, that lipid can increase our chances of Alzheimer's because it begins to accumulate in our blood vessels. Listen, most of us know that our bodies are really vascular, right? We got veins and arteries all over our bodies because it's pumping blood to different organs in the body. But what happens when we have something like high cholesterol or a diet that's high in saturated fat, an animal-based diet, a, a high ultra-processed food diet, we begin to clog those arteries. Now, most of us know that those clogged arteries can lead to a heart attack. Those clogged arteries can lead to a stroke but our brain is just as vascular as our body. And so just like we can clog the arteries that lead to our heart, we can clog the arteries that leads to our brain. And so if we have this excess fat in the body, excess high cholesterol, high saturated fat, start getting all of that plaque buildup in the arteries, that plaque begins to calcify, i.e. harden, this again cuts off the nutrient supply to the brain and results in micro and macro vascular damage. And this is a major, major risk for dementia. So those are just four, then those are major. Now let me, let me connect the dots here for you. Lipid dysregulation, glucose dysregulation, inflammation and oxidation. If you didn't pick up on this, all four of those things are lifestyle challenges. 
Like we get lipid and glucose dysregulation by how we eat. We get inflammation by how we eat, what we ignore, our type of stress. We get oxidative stress from not having enough antioxidants in the diet to combat the free radicals. If it hasn't been clear up until this point, these four major pathways for Alzheimer's are all connected with what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Primary, primarily out of those is our diet. So let's look at the standard American diet, right? So we know that the standard American diet is full of junk. It pretty much mirrors this picture on the screen, right? I wish this was an exaggeration, but this is what majority of people's diet are made up of. Fast food, junk food, ultra processed food, sweets, saturated fat, trans fat, you know, soda, desserts. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not accusing anybody on here of this. I'm not even talking to y'all. This is for other people who's not here tonight. All right. I know you messing with Hill Thyself and Moselle. This is not my people. I'm so I'm, this is for you to tell other people who are eating like this. Okay. But I want you to know that the standard American diet is responsible for increasing our risk of cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, kidney failure, heart disease, obesity. Now, our approach, our plan of attack is a whole food plant-based diet. Now, not just a vegan diet, all right? A vegan diet is going to get you somewhere. Don't get me wrong. Removing animal products, meat, eggs, dairy, seafood out of your diet is going to be a game changer. However, if you want to really, really increase your chances of preventing these lifestyle conditions, you want to be whole food plant-based vegan because just vegan is not enough. There's a lot of unhealthy things you can eat that is vegan. One of them, for example, sugar, another oil. Like there's a lot of vegan stuff that is not health promoting. All right. So it's not like, like, hey, if this is just a vegan meal, that's a green light. This is a vegan dessert. That's a green light. Absolutely not. All right. We want to make sure we're whole food plant based. We're consuming the food as close to its original molecular structure as possible, as close as it came out of the ground or off the tree as possible. So this is kind of what makes up a whole food plant based diet. All right. You have your vegetables, whole grains, legumes fruits, vegetables, and healthy fats, such as avocados, nuts, olives, okay? So what you don't see on here is sugar, what you don't see on here is oil, what you don't see on here is processed vegan junk food. That is not what's going to protect you from Alzheimer's. It's going to be eating whole real food. And let me just give you another illustration of what this looks like, okay? Both of these pictures are vegan, the one on the left, believe it or not, all of those foods, Hershey syrup, yes, is actually vegan. Oreo pie crust is vegan. Nutter butters is vegan. But they're all made with processed chemicals. So don't think the absence of animal products is the only thing we're going for. We're going for the intentional presence of plants. And the food is, the medicine is in the food if we eat the whole real food. All right, so this is a simple illustration of what that looks like. Finally, just to run this point home, what don't we eat on a whole food plant-based diet is the vegan, I don't care if it's a vegan donut, I don't care if, yes, soda is vegan, some potato chips are vegan, you can get these processed veggie burgers with the fake cheese and the refined buns. This is not what's going to protect you from Alzheimer's. We have to eat the plants. We have to eat the whole real food. We have to eat the greens. We have to eat the medicine, okay? So that's it for me. Let's open it up for questions. I'm gonna drop my contact information here. And then I have a special gift for you guys, which is a masterclass that I did about how to overcome a sugar addiction. So if anyone is interested in that masterclass, I'm gonna drop the link in the chat, but also here's a QR code for anyone who wants to grab it. And this is just a complimentary gift from me to you on how to overcome a sugar addiction. So you can grab that off the screen. And I'm also gonna drop the link in the chat for someone who might be on their cell phone and can't take a picture. Um, but that is, this is gonna be a great place to start to learn more about how to adopt a whole food plant-based diet for your lifestyle. And if you do have an issue with processed refined sugar, then this masterclass will definitely help you out with that. And I'm open for questions if anyone has any.
And I'm happy to go back to my contact information as well. How do you guys do questions, Katrina? Um, if they want to ask a question, they can come off a of mute. Oh, okay, great. All right. Very good. It doesn't look like we have any questions. Well, um, first of all, I want to say hi. I didn't have a lot of time, but say hi to my Joby and Sheila who are on. Hi, Awatha. Good to see you. Everybody's looking great and good. Um, so good to see y'all again as usual. Um, so I know we had a, had a time schedule, and so I want us to stick to it and respect the, the time schedule. Um, but that is my masterclass. I'm going to drop that in the chat. And here's my website and email address. Um, for anyone who might want additional assistance around adopting this regimen. <clears throat> Lisa, we just want you to know how, how, how fortunate we are <laughs> to, um, to have you on and to have access to your knowledge and your experience and your, your vast um, depth of, of, of study and, and research. And uh, I mean, what you just presented to us in 25 <laughs> minutes, um, it, it is just so amazing. And uh, to put all this together in, in one place in 25 minutes, I just hope that everyone realizes, you know, what a tremendous resource you are. And we just want to thank you so very much for always being willing to come on with us. And this, this uh, presentation will be available on our, on our, our YouTube channel. And, uh, and Lisa's offering the, the masterclass and, uh, and information for you. So please take advantage of that. Uh, I mean, so many of, our, of the Heal Thyself folks have taken her classes and they have been just uh, superbly blessed uh, by it. So um, I know that you don't have questions because it takes a while to assimilate all this information. <laughs> mm. Lisa, we just love you. We appreciate you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're back from South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Mazel. It was so good to see everyone and a pleasure to prevent, present for you guys tonight. Good luck on everything and for taking on this plant-based lifestyle. Cheers to you yes, guys. Yes. And I'll be contacting you about South Africa. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Take care. I love you. You too. Love you too. Bye God guys. God bless. Bye now. Bye Lisa. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, five minutes, and um, uh, we are going to, um, uh, at this time, perhaps your brain has been percolating, and we have some questions that we want to just toss out or put in the chat, and um, we want to, I'm so glad to see Deanna on, and Deanna, come off mute because I want you to say hello to everybody. <laughs> and I think I thought I saw Jeanette on too. Um, Jeanette, come off and say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. Nice to see everyone. <laughs> I enjoyed our session today. This is uh, Dr. Gina's uh, sister, everybody, in case you don't know, you can tell the resemblance. There's some beautiful people. <laughs> Yes, thank you so very much. We're so glad that you're on. And uh, glad to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, I hope we are back on schedule for eight o'clock on, on Sundays. <laughs> um, Dr. Gina, do you have anything? Yes, to it say? was a Dr. Gina. I don't know if she can hear me or if she's off of mute. I don't see her. I think she dropped. I think oh, she okay. Oh, okay. So uh, Cal, haven't heard Hi, from you. Everyone. Hi. <laughs> That's Jeanette. Oh, Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. How are yes. you? I'm. I'm okay. I'm okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Will you be at the gym tomorrow? Hopefully, I will. Okay. I, I I'll, I'll connect with you there. there. Okay. I'm so glad that you are and we missed you. Okay, <laughs> very good. Here. Okay, very good. Um, let's see who else we haven't heard from that I can call out. <laughs> Annette, how are you? Come off mute. Uh, you're still on mute. 
I think Linda Burks had her hand up. Oh, Linda, while Annette is getting off mute, Linda, say something hey, to I, us. I think I'm off. No, I do apologize. I No, I didn't have my hand up. I'll oh, okay. Yeah, well, we're glad to see you I'm anyway. Sorry. Your beautiful face. Thank you so very much. And all these people who are glowing, I, I tell you, this is what happens when we come off all that junk food and uh, processed <laughs> food and uh, canned food, and uh, we just start glowing. The beauty that God gave us comes out. Okay, Annette, say something to us. Hi, everybody. So glad to be with y'all this evening. Did We're you hear so me, Marcella? Huh? Did you hear me? I did, and we're so glad that you were here. God bless you. Thank you, you so much. Thank I'm you. glad to thank be here. Thank you. Yes, and I, I know that. Um, I think Hiawatha has been trying to get in touch with you, right? Yes, I've spoken with her several oh, okay. times. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I've, I've spoken with my RN too several times. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. very good. Everything good. is going very I good. I wonder who are those people okay. that we Thank haven't you. been able to reach. So we can call them out now. <laughs> Hi, Monica. We'd like to hear your voice. Marvy, we'd like to hear your voice. Cal, we'd love to hear your voice. Hello, everyone. This is Cal doing well. Thanks for the information. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. And thank you for being a, a strong supporter and, and bringing people in uh, to hear this information. And we, we don't care, you can, you can fill your living room with folks uh, and bring them all in, bring as many in as you can. We, we love it when you share the information because this is good stuff, folks. And we don't, we don't have to be sick. Yes, it is. And we do not have to be sick and we don't have to, to uh, we, we, we're not interested in living long. We're, we're interested in living well. And, and these things will help us do that. We have about, uh, we have no more time left. So I'm gonna, uh, let's see who I did not hear from. Uh, Marvy, I'm gonna ask Marvy to pray us out. Come off mute, Marvy. If not Marvy, I'm gonna ask Monica to, to pray us out. Sure, I can pray us out. Okay, Monica, thank you. God bless you. You're welcome. Lord, we thank you so much <clears throat> for the information shared with us this evening. We thank you for an opportunity for all of us to come together and learn how to live well and to be healthy. We just thank you so much for this group and please help us to continue to want to learn more and to take care of the bodies that you've blessed us with. We thank you so much for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful Amen. prayer. We Amen. That. Beautiful. Keep in mind that we have once, uh, one more, uh, two more sessions uh, left. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll, we'll hear from uh, Aaron, who was my yoga teacher at the gym, this beautiful ivory um, a wellness center here in Detroit. It's a beautiful place. And uh, she'll be talking about exercise and the brain. And then our last session, we will celebrate. So get those uh, videos in, those video reviews, so that we can give out all these prizes for our big celebration. And I know uh, Bertha has, has reviewed eight, Is that that call it call? eight videos. <laughs> someone asked a question, I didn't hear it. She was talking to someone else, go ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, get those videos in to your coaches so that you can uh, get all of the wonderful uh, rewards. The reward itself is really just looking at the videos. And uh, we're just so happy to have all of you and we love each one of you. We thank you for the pleasure of your time and for sharing uh, this time with us, but more importantly, to, to care enough about yourself to invest in yourself and your family. Because when you're sick and when you're not around, remember, they suffer and you want them to be well because they're, they're looking at you. They are, they are observing you and they're checking you out. So with that, um, unless someone else has something burning to say, we're going to end the session. We look forward to seeing you next Tuesday and uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful week and uh, we will uh, 
hopefully you will have a, a great week um, and enjoy yourself and your families. God bless you and your Thanksgiving holiday. Bye now. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.